So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and show you how simple, basic algebra is. Right. Um, doesn't mean that it's not a challenge, you know, at times. But the overall thing that we do is like a pretty straightforward thing. So what we'll do is we'll start with an expression. An expression will be like 3x plus 2 minus 5x minus this is a certain kind of expression, this expression called a linear expression. Right? So we'll start with linear expressions, and we'll just wheel away on those. We'll simplify those expressions. We'll write our own expressions. We'll combine expressions. We'll do all sorts of stuff with expressions. Then, with this linear expression, we'll transition into linear equations. Okay? But here's an expression. Equation is something like that x plus 5 equals 12. There's an equation. With an expression, we're trying to get it to look... Stop sharing. I'm sorry. We're trying to simplify that expression. Make that expression look as whittled down and basic as it possibly can be. Okay? We're going to work on that some today. Then we go into equations. So we don't... With equations, there's some simplifying. The ultimate goal of an equation... Can someone throw out what the ultimate goal of the equation is. Find x. So find x to solve for x. Or whatever letter we've chosen. Solve. Here we're more like simplifying. <coughs> so this isn't that complicated, right? It's, it's fairly simple, but it could be even more simple. Can you make this expression more simple? You can throw out some, just anything that you could do that is simpler than this is right now. Um, put, put two x's together. You got some x terms. They're, they're what we call like terms, right? We can put them together. What do we get when we put them together, Amy? Um, 8x. We got a 3x and we have a negative 5x. Oh, um, Well, this is like I have, when we say three x, we're really saying we have three x's. Just like we have three apples, or we have three dollars, three anythings, right? It's three times an x, just like three apples is three times an apple, right? So we have three x's. If I subtract five x's, I have? Two my lord. Two? Two. Negative two x's. Negative two x's. Negative two x's. Okay. Can we simplify it even? Should I write plus two minus seven? We make it simpler? Or just put negative five. Or put negative five. I can do this. Like I can plug an a, a number in for x in that expression and work it all out, and I'll get some number as a result. I could do the same number in this expression, and what will I get? Three. Who knows, right? We don't know what x is. But if we compare what we get here and what we get here, how will they compare? Numbers. Let's try it. Let's plug in uh, 8. Okay? Plug in 8 for x here and see what you get. And plug in 8 here and see what you get. Okay? Shouldn't take long. Go ahead. Just plug in 8 in the top one. Plug in 8 in the bottom one. Let's see what you get in both instances. Okay, let's plug 8 into the first one. Let's see what happens. 3 times 8. Plus two, we're gonna follow the order of operations here. Seven. So the order of operations says I would multiply these two together first. I would also multiply these together. Right, then I'll work on addition and subtraction. Three times eight is 24. Plus two. Minus five times eight is 40. And seven. Okay. 26. What's that? 26. 26 minus 40. Yeah. Minus 7. Negative 21. Yeah. Did you get negative 21? Yeah. Oh. Negative 21. Okay. Oh, I yes? I got 21. Negative 21? Yeah. Okay, negative 21. Now let's try it in this second one. Let's see what happens. Negative 2 times 8 minus 5. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. 21 minus 5. One. What am I trying to show you? Shh. This number is hard easier when you bless it. 
Okay, when I when there's less involved, fewer operations involved. Well, it's simpler, right? Simpler. What am I trying to show you about these two expressions? Oh, cool. Pen down, pen down, call the medic. What am I trying to show you about these two expressions? They're equal. They're, they're equal to each other. They do the same thing. This one does it in more steps. This one does it in fewer steps. But they're equivalent to each other. What's that? So to make our lives easier, we make expressions have fewer steps by simplifying those expressions. Stop sharing food. Stop sharing food. Don't share food. Stop sharing food. Don't, don't feed it. But I want to not If we can't handle the not sharing, then we're going to not be able to bring food into the class anymore. Jason. Right? Who's this? Eat it. Take y'all back to like one crumb. Stop being a distraction. It clearly is a distraction. If we can't handle it, then at whatever ages you are, it's a, it's a variety. You won't be allowed to bring food in because you can't handle it. These two expressions, same as each other. All we did was combine like terms, right? We could also call this combining like terms. So what happens a lot, we get a new kind of expression, a new class of expression. We work on simplifying that kind of expression. Then we transition into equations that are the same as these expressions. So this is a linear expression. Okay? This is a linear equation. Okay? Then we get into linear functions. Okay? Uh, so a linear function might be like y equals 5x minus Seven. We made up linear function. Okay. Now these functions can look like they can take different forms, but really do the same thing. As long as there's a place to put something into and a place to get something out of, that's what a function does. This can look like uh, x y table. It could look like a bunch of ordered pairs, different one, different one, ordered pairs, also pretty common. And then the, a very popular form of a function, the way to look at a function, is a graph. Okay. So, draw some graph, this guy's graph is gonna look something like that, kind of like that. But all this is, is just a bunch of x's and y's that Make the equation true. So if I can find an x and a y, it can go here and there. Then I find, uh, after I plot all those points, I start to make this picture, this graph. Okay. So, and, and you have, for the most part, last year, you've gone through this linear stuff. Okay. Not to say that we won't do some more this year, but you've done a lot of linear. You've solved linear equations, you've looked at linear functions, you've drawn graphs of linear functions, lines. That's why they're called linear, and you graph them, they're lines. Right? Then we come back through, we've, we've talked about linear graphs, so then we jump back to expressions again. The next kind of expression, we could group them together lots of different ways, but the way that we group these together now is quadratic expressions. Right? So we have like x squared plus 2x minus 5. This, if I cover this up, this is linear. I throw an x squared in there, now it's quadratic. And then we do this whole thing over here. I'll show you guys a fairly straightforward thing. Talk about expressions, equations, functions, and graphs. Come back to quadratic expressions. And we work with those for a while, and we combine them, and we combine the terms and simplify those, and that kind of thing. Then we come over to equations. Right? So we have like five equals x squared plus 14. We learned how to solve these linear equations. Now we learn new strategies to solve these quadratic equations. And then we talk about quadratic functions. There's a quadratic equation. And we look at the 
sorry, function, quadratic function. Then we look at their graphs. The graphs of quadratic functions look like a U shape. We call it parabola. Then we get done with quadratic functions. We come back through and we learn about cubic. So we learn about cubic expressions, cubic equations, cubic functions, and the graphs of cubic functions. So that's that's how algebra is laid out. And once you get down through general polynomials, those are pretty much type of algebra. A cubic is where, see how this has an x squared? If your expression has an x cubed in it, now you're talking about a cubic. It has an x to the fourth, we're talking about a fourth degree polynomial, we're talking about a fifth degree polynomial. X to the sixth there, you have a sixth degree polynomial. And all the time we're just going through this, this sequence here to equations and solving for x, to functions and looking at how those functions behave. When I let x be a big number, what happens to y? When I let x be a really big negative number, what happens to y? And what happens in between? And what do their graphs look like? So I wanted to show you that because it's a fairly good overview of all of that. So you can see like the, the 20,000 uh, overhead view of what algebra looks like. So it doesn't seem like such a disjointed, random smashing together of unrelated things. So you just do this over and over and over for different expressions. We could do it differently, but this is, this is how we do it. This is pretty traditional. So what we're gonna do is continue to work with expressions, all right? And depending on how we do, we may look at a quadratic expression or two. We may work our way into some equations. Okay. We're kind of in an interesting position where this is a continuation of a previous class. But I can tell we still have, we have to work on this expression part. We need to understand more what a, a variable is, how to work together with the order of operations to simplify these expressions. Okay. So, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do that, I'm gonna give you a list of like steps, like I did before the number tricks. Remember that? Yeah. A while back. Okay. But in this case, they're not necessarily gonna be tricks. There's, there's not necessarily gonna be like you wind up with eight, or you wind up with any particular thing. Okay. I'm gonna see if you can translate something that's written in like English words, if you can translate that to symbols, that will make you do all that stuff in the same order, okay? And if you remember things like combining like terms, uh, distributive property, all these kinds of stuff, so you can simplify these expressions. All right, you ready for that? So it's gonna be like you pick a number, just like before, and I'm just gonna have you do this thing, this thing, this thing. You're gonna write that, you're gonna translate that into an algebraic expression, Meaning that you use letters to represent this number. You do those things to that number in the order that we lay it out. Okay. Take that number, let's multiply it by three. Let's subtract five. Let's multiply that by okay, four. Okay, so I just want you to simplify that expression down to as simple as it can be. Okay, uh, all right, so <coughs> let's go through this step by step and make sure that once it's done, uh, whatever happens to x uh, happens in the right order according to what I just wrote up there. Uh, can so, you uh, use the number three? No, because what we're going to do is write an algebraic expression. Algebraic meaning we're using letters to represent numbers. Okay? So we can plug in three after we're all done to verify that this, this is what it should simplify down to, and the original expression are the same, because they will take three and make it the same number. Huh? Okay, let's, do, let's work through this one together. So when I say pick a number, 
right? This list of steps will, well, it'll do whatever it does to whatever number you plug into it, right? I can plug in 6, multiply by 3 and get 18. Uh, subtract 5 and get 13, multiply by 4 and get 52, and add 7 and get 50, yeah, right? But that's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to leave the space open for any number that anybody wants to pick, but instead of a list of steps as an algebraic expression. All right? So we're going to leave the space open with an X or an A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever letter you want to use. Okay. You could even use the number symbol. Just we don't do that really. So how do I show you that I want to multiply this number by a 3? Sure, a dot and a three. Or parentheses. Parentheses three? No. They're just so close together. What's that? They're just close together. What's close together? Just a multiplication. Like three x. Oh, or instead of either of those, just put them close together, three and then x. Okay. That's algebra shorthand for multiply these two numbers together. Multiply whatever you plug in for x by three. Next, subtract five. Now let's look at it. When I plug this in and I follow the order of operations, if I were to plug a 3 in there or a 4 or whatever, would it get multiplied by 3 first and then subtract 5? Yes. Let's just plug it. Let's see. 4 minus 5. Would we multiply by 3 first and then subtract 5? Yeah. yeah, the order of operations prioritizes multiplication, then subtraction. There's only two things happening, multiplication and subtraction, and they'll happen in the order of multiplication, then subtraction. That's what we all agreed to do. Great. So the way it looks is fine. It follows this order as well. Then multiply by 4. Let's see. First, I want to take 3 times the number, subtract 5, and then multiply by 4. Is that what's going to happen according to the order of operations as it looks? Jenny, you say no. Okay. Why not? Because multiplication is first. Before. Multiplication is first. So instead of subtracting the 5 before multiplying by 4, we multiply 5 times 4 again, negative 20. Okay. So we fix it by doing what? Parentheses. Parentheses around all of that. Now, the order of operations with its parentheses, we'll multiply this by 3, subtract 5, be done with that. Once we have that result, multiply that by 4. Then add seven. Is that going to happen in the right order? Is seven going to adding seven going to come very last? Yes, it will. Multiply a number by three. Subtract five. That's all inside this parentheses. That's once that's done, then you multiply by four. Good. That's what we wanted it to do. And at the very end, when we're done, we'll multiply by four. Add seven. Okay. So now I'm going to simplify this. If I did this right, we should wind up. 12x minus 13. So how do we clean all that up? How do I simplify this down to this? Any first step that you can take? Combine the terms. Uh, okay, what like terms can we combine? Uh, well, I was going to say the 5 and the 7, but the 5 is inside the parentheses. Good point. You can't put the 7 and the 5 together because it's, you know, it's got to come out of the parentheses somehow. Right? So that's, that's out for now. Never mind. Never mind. Yes? How do you get 12x from 3 minus 5? Well, okay. So, should I think of this as the number 3 minus the number 5? Ariel, you say no. Why not? Well, that's a different idea. Can I, but can I take 3x minus 5 and say like 2 or negative 2? Can I say this is negative 2x? Yeah. 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 No. No. I mean, just since it seems to be such a widespread misunderstanding, I'll just say no. Right, the 5 doesn't have an x, or on the other hand, 3 isn't just the number 3, it's 3 times the number x. Right. If there was a number in there for x, I wouldn't subtract 5 from it right now. Right? 
I would multiply first. There's just no number in there for x, so I can't multiply by 3. And until I multiply by 3, I can't subtract 5. Or is another way to think of it. These are not like terms. Okay, have you heard that before? They're not like terms. We can't combine them. If the 5 had an x now, we're talking about like terms. Okay. If we did say 3x minus 5 is negative 2x, we're saying that taking a number, multiplying by 3, and subtracting 5 is the same as just taking a number and multiplying it by negative 2. We can show that that's not the case. We just have to plug a number in there, right? That's enough to show that that's not the case. Let's throw 7 in there. Let's throw 7 and, and show yourself that it's not the same. Go ahead. Show, throw 7 in there. Show that it couldn't possibly be the same thing. Got the left side one. 3 times 7 minus 5, what do we get? Put 7 in there for x. 16. 3 times 7 minus 5, that's 21. Minus 5, 16. Let's come over here. 7. Negative 2 times 7 is? Negative 14. Is it the same? No. Far from it. Not even close. Couldn't even trick somebody into thinking those are the same thing. 16 and negative 14. Okay. So there is at least some like proof or, or validation that we can't put 3x and negative 5 together and make negative 2x. Okay. Because to do that would be to say that multiplying a number by 3 and subtracting 5 is the same as taking the same number and multiplying by negative 2, which we just showed is not the same thing. Right. And to put it as compactly as possible, that would be not combining like terms. Those are not like terms. You can't put together like terms. You've heard of that, right? How many times have you heard the, the phrase like terms? More than once? Mm -hmm. Ten times? More than a hundred times? times? How many times have you heard the phrase like terms? Like a lot. Like a lot. Okay. <laughs> is it is it like a lot or is it more than a lot? Like more than a lot. More than a lot, okay. Okay, so we come all the way back around. I think we're going to have to address that issue a few more times. Okay, I want you to remember that what we said today, 3x minus 5, not like terms, cannot be put together in that way. But Ariel, what were you saying? Multiply the 4 and the 3. 4 and the 3. And the 4 and the 5. 4 and the 5. <coughs> and that equals like 12x. 12x. 20. Negative 20. Negative 20 minus 20 plus 7. That's negative 20 plus 7? That's 13. Negative 13. 12x minus 13, that's where that comes from. What's this called? Distributive, distributive property. A distributive property. How many of you remember the distributive property? Raise your hand if you remember the distributive property. <laughs> Just did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Distribute the 4 to the 3x and to the negative 5. Oh, my mind just got blown. You what? You didn't know what? I didn't know we were supposed to do that, but that makes sense To, well, since we can't, you know, if we think about the order of operations, it says parentheses first. I can't do anything inside the parentheses. We already tried. You can't combine them. Right? They have to stay separated the way they are. So how can I do the parentheses if I can't combine these things because they're not like terms? Now, the distributive property is the answer to that issue. You distribute it to both of those things. Now the parentheses, now there's nothing going on with the parentheses. Parentheses is, quote, done. Done, oh. oh. please. Into his area. <laughs> OK. So we're going to do this again, we're going to simplify an expression. Reviewing some very, very important necessary skills. Um, pick a number, and remember, by a number, pick a number, I mean leave it open. Leave it at x or a or b or c or whatever. Multiply by 2. Add. Multiply by three. Add 
add 12. Divide by 6. Subtract 2. Okay. Write the algebraic expression using variables, using parentheses as needed, and simplify. So we're going to take a number x, multiply by 2, add 6, multiply by 3, plus 12, add 12, uh, divide by 6, and minus 2. Is that going to do it in the right order? Yes. No. No. Why? Why not? Because I'm always wrong. Here, let's, let's do this together. Let's plug a number in there. What number should we plug in? Plug in what? Two. Two? Okay, we'll plug two in. We'll multiply by two and get four. Add six and get ten. Multiply by three and get thirty. Add twelve and get forty-two. Divide by six and get seven. Subtract two and get five. Okay? Let's try it in here. Let's put a two in there. Two times two plus six times 3, plus 12, minus 6, minus 2. All right. I'm going to follow the order of operations. The order of operations says 2 times 2 is 4, plus 6 times 3 is 18, 12 divided by 6 is 2, minus 2. Okay. Um, let's see, 2 minus 2, that's 0. 18 plus 4 is 22. We're supposed to get what? 5. 5, not 22. Because we did things in a certain order this way, the order of operations makes us do things in a certain order the way it's written, and it's not the right order, it's not this order, guys. Right? Mm -hmm. So in particular, like, multiply by 3, you see what happens when we do the order of operations? We just do the 6 times 3 get 18. We're supposed to multiply by 3 after what? Hmm? Well, we'll multiply by 3 after you add 6. And you're supposed to add 6 to what? Uh, to this, right? Which yeah. is the result of times 2. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to multiply by 2 first, then add 6, and only after we've added 6, multiply by 3. Now that's, that's not the order of operations. The order of operations would have to multiply before we add. So how do I get the 6 to add to the 4 before we multiply by 3? Messing around with the newspaper is not the way to go. If I want this 3, so if I want this stuff to get added together first, how do I make sure that happens first and then multiply by 3? Don't follow the operation. Order of operation. But we have to, right? Yeah. There's no law against Otherwise it. Otherwise, we're going to get this true. We did, the other day, all agree to use the same order. So if we did agree to use that order, that's what we would get. But there is a way to make you go out of order. Right? There's a way to force somebody to go out of this order to, to instead of multiply by multiply three by six to put all this stuff together first and then multiply by three. How do I get you to do all this stuff first and then multiply by three? Parentheses. Parentheses. Mm -hmm. Now we can follow the order of operations, okay? But do it in the order that we want. Parentheses, right? We we, ju we jump back up to the first part of the order of operations, and we do that before anything else. So if I put parentheses around this, then I'll make sure to multiply by 2, and then add 6, and then multiply by 3. Right? We have a similar issue over here when we say divide by 6. Divide by 6 is supposed to come after all of this stuff. How do we make divide by 6 come after all of this? How do we make divide by 6 come after all of this? Around? Around what now? Around 12 and 2. This 2? Yeah. So like this? Yeah. Yeah, so now I'm inside this parentheses. Let's make sure we multiply by 2 first. Yes. Add 6 next. Yes, it's inside the parentheses. Multiply by 3 next. Yes. Add 12. Yes. Then divide by 6. Yes, only after we've done all that stuff in the parentheses do we get to the dividing by 6 step. Okay? And then subtract 12. Or sorry, 2, not 12. Subtract 2. Go ahead and get rid of all that. 
Now I've written an algebraic expression that follows these steps in this order. Now we want to simplify that expression. Now that it's all exactly the way it should be, let's simplify the expression. I picked up a, you know, a reminder in the last example that we had of how we can simplify this expression. Okay, what is something that I can start with that will make this simpler than it is right now? Care to elaborate? What do I do with three? Oh, oh no, I meant plug three in, but you can distribute this. I, I want to. Okay, so there's a difference between simplifying, which is what we want to do, and evaluating. Evaluating is plug a number in. I want to simplify. I don't. I want to leave the variable there. What do you do with a three? Distribute it. Distribute it. Three times two x is six x. Three times six is eighteen. Okay. So we distributed and we came up with six x plus eighteen plus twelve. All this is in parentheses. Divide by six. Back two. I did so good. Now what can we do to simplify this? Even just a little bit more. Okay, is there anything we can do inside the parentheses? Well, now we're coming back. To, can we do 6x plus 18? Mm -hmm. um, Why not? Because <coughs> this guy doesn't have an x. They're not like terms. Right? How we, we talked about that before back here where we can't do 3x minus 5 is negative 2x. They're not like terms. Can we add 18 and 12? Yeah. Yes. According to the order of operations, we could because what you could do at each step is imagine that you plug a number in for x. You could even actually plug a number in for x just to verify that this works. Okay. If there were a number there, I would multiply these two numbers together. And well, adding these three numbers would come next, and I could certainly add the 18 and the 12. They're like terms, we can add them together. So we have 6x plus 30 divided by 6 minus 2. The outs like this? Yeah. Or you can Or distribute. Distribute. Okay. We distributed up here with the three, three times, right? Do we distribute the division as well? We do. Division distributes just like multiplication distributes. In essence, multiplication and division are the same thing. I could even turn this division by 6 into multiplication. If I'm dividing by 6, then it would be the same to multiply by what? 2. 1 sixth. <laughs> to divide by 6 is the same as to multiply by 1 sixth. It might be easier for you to think back to dividing by 2, multiplying by 1 half, mm -hmm. same thing. Divided by three, multiplying by one third, same thing. So either way you think about it, division distributes, divide by six, everything in the parentheses, or multiply by one sixth, it's all the same. What's one sixth times six x? One sixth times six times x, right? Uh, one sixth times six is one. So 1x, what's 1 sixth times 30? 5, 30 divided by 6 is 5, is 2, and 5 minus 2 is 3. Multiply by 10, subtract 
four. Multiply what you have on that, multiply by five. Add 20. Divide by 10. And subtract. One. Right, algebraic expression. And simplify that algebraic expression. Remind me, if I forget this time, to plug a number in to the first expression and to the simplified expression. All right. Pick a number, multiply by 10, subtract 4, multiply by 5, add 20, divide by 10, subtract 4. Okay. <laughs> Can we do it on the board? Huh? Can we do it on the board? No. Well, if you're going to do something on the board right now, you need to fix this so that it goes in the right order. Okay, so that this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Are you still making it? Uh, it's on TV. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I'm out. Yeah. SpongeBob. Are you just asking for Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Five, you get 50x. Which would we do first in the order of operations? Oh, right. Twenty divided by ten is what we would do. Okay. Ramey is putting together these two, this negative twenty and this twenty, in the order that we want to do it. But the order of operations would say divide by ten. Divide twenty by ten first. If you put these, the way that it's written right now, if you put this negative 20 plus 20 together, you're not doing it in the order that we agreed to do it. Right. This is what I'm saying. The way this is written right now, I would do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division from left to right, addition, and subtraction from left to right. You're wanting to add these two together. But there's a division right here. Order of operations do we take 20 divided by 10 first? We get 50x minus 20 plus 2, because 20 divided by 10 is 2, We can fix it though. We can make this happen before this happens. How do we do that? Parentheses. We're missing some parentheses. To force the 20, negative 20 in positive 20 to be added together before we divide the 20 by 10. One D away from Netflix and Chavez. I get it. I, nope. I put parentheses around there, I'm just like blocking the negative 20 and the 20 from dividing and still 20 divided by 10 is what we come next. I did that still, the 20 divided by 10 would happen first because the 20 divided by 10, that would come first to help you work on what you can actually get the chair for that school season. What's that? Um, that was the mascot. Yeah, I would have to use it all the time. Right after. Please like, stop to talking. Go. Listen to what's going on up here. It would be after 20 and it's between. Okay, it would be between the 20 and the divide sign. So you could put it in the 20s, but coming in the wrong. After the plus 20. Put the parentheses after the plus 20. And then we'll do it. Let's grab this and back it up, okay? Yeah. And now, we're putting parentheses, we're saying, no, don't divide by 10 yet. Oh. 
right? We're seeing we're interrupting that order. Now we're stopping the 20 from dividing, or sorry, stopping the 10 from dividing the 20, bringing the 20 and the negative 20 in to the parentheses. Now we can combine those in, in that order. Now it's correct according to order of operations because we use parentheses. Um, so I just need to use parentheses. Right. See if we're we're catching on to what I want you to see here. Uh, let's take the number five. Oh. Plug it in there. For X. Right. So in this original expression here, plug five in for X. Go. Do what? Plug five in for X. Okay. If we plug in five. Ten times five minus four. Twenty-one. Times five plus twenty. Parentheses. Divide by ten. Minus four. We follow the order of operations. We're going to go to the innermost parentheses, of course. Ten times five is fifty. Minus four. Multiply by five. Plus twenty. Divide by ten. Parentheses. Minus four. Forty-six times five plus twenty divided by ten minus four. Forty-six times five two hundred and thirty plus twenty divided by ten minus four. Two hundred and thirty plus twenty is two hundred and fifty divided by ten minus four. Two hundred and fifty divided by ten is twenty-five. Minus 4, 21. Okay, now I'd like you to plug in 5 to this expression. 5 to that expression. To this expression. 21. Oh, no, it's not. Doesn't take very long, does it? 5 times 5 is 25. Minus 4 is 21. 5 times 4 is 21. Did you have known that that was going to happen beforehand? <laughs> no? Probably. Well, as soon as it's 5, and 5 times 5, it's just you know, fives. Where did this come from? Where did 5x minus 4 come from? The one to be there. Can we take more than half a second, think about where it came from, and give an answer to where it came from? How did we come up with 5x minus 4? Coincidence, this negative 4 and this negative 4 happen to be the same number, but it's not because of that. How did we come up with 5x minus 4? What did we start with to wind up with 5x minus 4? Distributing. Distributing what? Distributing. The what? Five. Distributing the 5. Mm -hmm. And then adding 20. And then dividing by 2. Sorry, 10, right? So where did this come from? How did it start its life? We did not just pick this at random. We didn't choose it. It was made out of something. What did we make it out of? Numbers. Which numbers? Which expression? The one up there. What's that? The one up there. Up where? Right there. Right up where? <laughs> right there? Yeah. This one? Yeah, that up there. This one? Yeah. Over here. 
How about the top one? How about the top one? Yeah. Did it come from the top one? Yes. Yeah. Remember it coming from the top one? Yeah. When we got all done, before you got here, yes, it was. It started as five. What was the top one? Let's do it again. Without five, just X. We distributed the five, we got 50x minus 20 plus 20 inside the parentheses, divide by 10 minus four, 50x minus 20 plus 20, that's just 50x, divided by 10 minus four, 50x divided by 10 is? Five. 5x minus four. Where did this come from? Right there. How did we get from here to there? This was the last one. What's that? This is the last one. We got from here to there because it's the last one? It's the last one you have to do. Well, because it's the order that it needs to go in. So we just follow the order, mm -hmm. combine things that we can combine, multiply things we can multiply, divide things we can divide. In a word, simplify. Simplify this and get this. Okay. What did we get when we plugged five into this expression? Plug in five, we got out what? Twenty-one. I don't see it written here, but we did indeed. We got twenty-one. What did we do when we plugged five in here? What did we get? Twenty-one. Okay. I want you to quickly do this. Plug in seven into this expression. Tell me what you get. Thirty-one. 31, everybody agree? Yes. Yeah. 31. What's going to happen when you plug 7 into this expression? 31. See what I'm start, starting to see what I'm trying to get you to see? Yeah. This expression? This expression? R? 31. Similar. How similar are they? Same answer. So similar that they're the same. Right? The thing that you do to x, all its stuff, Right? It's the same as doing just multiply by 5 and subtract 4. Right? And as long as this x here doesn't have a square on it, right? or you don't wind up with an x that has a square on it, you can always simplify a linear expression down to something like this. Something times x minus something. Something times x plus something else. Does that sound kind of familiar? Have you seen this something times x plus something else? Yes. What does it sound like? Something times x plus something. I threw it out to the last class. They just shouted it right out, so I wondered if Wait, what is that? something times x plus something does something sound similar to you something from your past. Something times x. What's that? Something like that. Oh, about <laughs> they throw this out there. M? M? Oh, sorry. Mx. Mx plus y equals something. Close. Mx plus b. Mx plus b. Oh, that's y equals mx plus b. Is a linear. It's a linear function. And this is a linear expression because it looks like mx plus b. This is mx 5x plus negative 4. Until we can do this smoothly and uh, correctly, like accurately, until we understand that this expression simplified and makes this expression, we'll just keep doing it. Okay? So let's do it again. No. No, two minutes. I time. Literally, what are those? Okay, take a number. Why? Pick up your pen. Look at your paper. What? Look at your paper. Okay. Look up here. Those are the two places that you look. This does nothing. We're going to multiply this number, x, right, by 3.
team. So we take a number, we'll multiply by 3, subtract 6, multiply by 5, but what am I missing right now? Parentheses around 3x minus 6. If this happens, all this stuff happens first, multiply by 3, subtract 6, then multiply by 5, okay. then divide by 15. This happens, right? Got to get figure out what your numerator is, and then divide by 15 at the end. It's not quite the end. We add seven. Multiply by two, but multiply all of this by two. Okay. That'll get the job done. Well, we can't really divide. If we divide this by 2, then now we're just dividing out 2 out of nowhere. Right? Well, say I, let's, let's plug 7 in there, okay? Plug 7 in. What do you get? Have a good day, everybody. Plug 7 in there. 24. Now, if I if I were to divide this by two, I just get x plus five, and I wouldn't get twenty. I get, I get seventeen. This needs to give me twenty-four because that's that's the same as the original expression. I if I did anything differently, if I divided this by two, I get x plus five. Now it doesn't give me the same thing as when I plug seven or whatever. So it stays two x plus ten. 